Hi guys and welcome to RC Shin. This is my Hana. This is another product, another wing in my Hana. And I could say it's fixed wing Sunday. Spent the morning finishing this wing. It's actually a nice kit, but since I'm not so used to flying wings anymore, or building wings, I, I it took me quite some time. Actually around uh, 8 to 10 hours or so. But I had to figure out a lot. And one thing that helped me is the build and review video from iForce2D from New Zealand. Shoutouts to you guy. I'll link his video in the description so you can check his video out. So the wing I'm reviewing today is the S800 Sky Shadow from Reptile. The company seems to be called Reptile. Banggood sent me this for review. And I liked the small form factor, the ability to hand launch it and to just have an easy and fun FPV platform. It uses a multi-copter motor and propeller, two servos. And inside here, I mean I covered it up with, with some white strong tape, but I will show you pics now. Uh, with the electronics. The electronics are just power distribution ports, so to say, and a gyro stabilizer. It also has a 5 volt step down regulator. I'm not sure if I was really supposed to solder it in. I mean, in the first place, I thought, why will, would they not solder them uh, displayed in by default? I think you only need this if you have a 5 volt camera or equipment gear. There are two connectors, the 5V and the main battery connectors. You can take power for your FPV cable harness. I mean, uh, one thing I should note, this kit is, is kind of awesome because you get everything you need except the battery, the HD cam and the, the radio receiver. But you have a video transmitter, you have an FPV cam, uh, the motor, the servos, so it's really a complete package, almost complete package, and I liked this. Uh, one thing that I switched immediately was the standard CMOS cam that comes with it. It's, it's supposedly a, a very cheap one. I will test it in a, a cam, in an FPV cam uh, comparison video, of course, but it's just a normal CMOS cam and yeah, I don't want to use it because I Earlier I showed you the Fox here 16x9 cam and I integrated this one here because it's not good for mini quads with the 16x9 wide angle but it's cool for wings so I wanted to use it for a wing and that's why I went with it right away and I have my SJ cam SJ5000X Elite here and it's such a snug fit that I actually just took some tape around the cam to be able to tear it out. So I don't think I have to secure it any more than this because the SJ cam is quite thick. So if you, have, if you use a normal GoPro 3 you either have to use the latches that are supposed to be used to take a velcro around it or I've seen yeah iForce use the Xiaomi Yi and he screwed it in from the bottom to the tripod mount, which, uh, which is a nice solution. Or you just add some foam in the back to squeeze it in there, like I did. Battery, uh, it should be a 3 cell, but a 4 cell could also be used, because the motor and the ESC all work with 4 cell power with 16.4 volts. The video transmitter is on, so the video transmitter is a little 200 milliwatts 5.8 with many channels. I will show you the infos in the description. Uh, it's from, I think, from 7 to 24 volts, and so is my camera, so I'm all, all good for 4S setup. 4S setup, the only problem with 4S setup could be that the batteries uh, are too high. You don't have a lot of place in the compartment for thick batteries, so that's the only. And even with my, I have a 3-cell 2250 uh, turnkey here. 
I had to just carve out a bit of the foam here. It's being held down with magnets. Uh, other people had problem with the magnets falling out, so maybe you should glue them in. I didn't. They look okay for me. These servo horns here, or these, you know, these servo things, are like zip ties. But I wouldn't trust this plastic, so I also glued it in. That's that's a tip I can give you. Glue it in. It won't hold the stress. You have carbon fiber rods to strengthen, to stiffen the wing, carbon fiber here. You have the main spar here and here. And I also didn't glue on the wings, because if you glue in these foam parts here, the carbon spar is... I had to really push it a lot to fit. So in theory I could take the wing apart to be smaller, but yeah, I didn't make my cabling uh, that flexible yet. I want to see how it works and if I really like this wing and I fly it a lot. And if I want to do a, a split wing uh, for transportation uh, solution, then I will have to come up with an idea for this here. But at the moment it's, it's fine and it's really small. You could even... Uh, attach it to backpack and look like a rocket man so yeah, it should be fine as a receiver i use an easy uhf eight channel light you need four channels here uh, three channels for control and one channel for the mode switch there are two stabilized mode and a manual mode the two stabilized modes i'm not sure about their difference um, but you can adjust the, the gain with, with little screws. And it's f funny, you can turn it the gain either to the right or to the left and it will either uh, it will reverse the servo directions for the gain for the gyro thingy. So that's a nice thing. Yeah, and you have to glue on the winglets. The winglets look fine. The, the material is really strong. And with the, with the carbon in it, it's really a stiff wing. So I don't have a chance of maybe testing this uh, too soon, I'm afraid. We'll have to wait for the maiden at least uh, two weeks or a month, I'm afraid. But if you want to start right away, I mean, it's uh, the kit is $100. And that's really, really a nice price for a video transmitter cam and all the gear, so I don't think you can do much wrong with this. Maybe if you're an enthusiast you will uh, change out the servos if you want metal gear servos or stronger servos. <laughs> the funny thing is you get... You see that they, they just took all the electronics from a multicopter because you also get four props and two normal and two counterclockwise props. <laughs> so that's, that's funny. So, according to which motor direction you get uh, randomly by uh, soldering on the three motor wires, you will have to use either two clockwise or counterclockwise. I mean, the nut in the, on the motor is a counterclockwise nut, so uh, I was lucky and I, I found the right direction, but I wouldn't re-solder it uh, to, to turn in the other direction because you have two other props as well. This thing has plenty of thrust. I've seen uh, people throwing it quite gently in the air and applying full throttle and it ascends. Okay, so I will browse you through the pictures I've taken while building it. The first picture you see the electronics. Uh, you have to take care that the front arrow points to the front, of course, and connect aileron, elevator, throttle and the mode switch uh, there on the left side. The ESC cable is on the back side. Then you solder on your battery connector in this front to soldering pads and the ESC motor wires in the back. This black part is the top compartment. This is where the gyros sit. It looks like this and here you see the alien aileron elevator and rudder gyro stabilizer. We don't use the rudder here. You have to set the jumpers up there to have a delta configuration. So the next you see the, the spars and the main body and you have to glue in a wooden plate 
and after the wooden plate the carbon plate so the screw heads don't stick into the foam. About the building process in general and about gluing this, this material. Uh, use some sandpaper to roughen the surface of whatever you want to glue of this foam and then use some uh, maybe hot glue, super glue. I've used this styrofoam glue, it's uh, Yuhu Pore. <laughs> I'm not sure if you get it in outside of Europe, but uh, this works quite well. You apply it to both surfaces you want to glue together, wait around 10 minutes until it's quite dry and then you press it quite firmly together. You have uh, a wooden blade on the bottom beneath the battery and also some holes for the velcro. Here you see the motor mount with these spacers. If you're lazy like me you maybe want to shorten the path the servo wire has to go and then you can use the original lengthy uh, servo wire. If you don't, if you use their, their channel in the styrofoam it will be just a, two or three centimeters too short. Yeah, soldering is the least favorite thing I do. Uh, there was quite a bit of soldering involved. The ESC, the battery connector, this little 5 volt regulator and the cables. So yeah, it took me about two, two hours to solder this thing, but I'm not the best at soldering. You see this in the quality of my soldering here, for example. Uh, this was the first for me to solder a plate onto another plate and as I said I don't think I really need it because on the right side you see V out, video out plus and minus which is the, the current of the main battery in my case three cells while you have 5 volt out and 5 volt out would be for other cams or video transmitters that need this lower voltage. Here you see that I've used some foam to protect the, the upper plate the ESC soldered on. The ESC uh, fits quite nicely on the bottom part of the wing. Here you see all the cabling, plus, minus and yellow for video. Attach it to the power on the board. And the yellow cable can go straight to the video transmitter cable. Here you see the frame 4 which is Immersion RC band. I tested all the channels from 1 to 8 with my Immersion RC power meter. And I found that channel 8 would be the best with 270 milliwatts on frame 3 and I even came up to 360 milliwatt if I was very high in the frequency like 59-45. Uh, so that's often like this that video transmitters have a certain frequency where they work best. One, one downside of this whole installation, it uses reversed polarized video transmitter antenna connectors. And that's ugly. And as you see here on this picture, I had to use an adapter to get from reverse polarized to normal SMA connectors to be able to use my normal antennas. Because you don't want to use the standard antenna they supply because it's a normal linear polarized one. Here you see the bottom with the ESC. And I really kept the ESC cables as short as possible. You also see that for the Easy UHF I had to increase the size of the receiver compartment. And since I swapped the, the sides by error, I also carved out enough space on the other wing, which is unnecessary because the video transmitter is really small. The server horn thingy. The build was not that complicated. I mean, you get four pages of information. Yeah, the, the center of gravity. I think I'm spot on with the 2250 three cell battery and with the SJ cam in front. So, if you don't use an HD cam or any cam at all in the front, you have to use around 150 grams of, of ballast in the front. The CG is easy to remember. It's one finger in front of the ESC cover plate here. Yeah. The video transmitter antenna sticks out a bit too much now with the RP SMA adapter, but that's okay. I just have to take care not to catch any branches if I'm flying through stuff, but 
let's see if this thing or how this thing flies at all and then think about stunts. So I have about yeah, one and a half centimeter of up and down travel, which is quite much. And I used a lot of exponential on my radio. I use 40 or 50 percent exponential. So my first flies, I will figure out how it flies and dial it down if needed. And one thing you will definitely have to watch out uh, is the server directions or the gyro directions. For the first flight it's maybe clever to don't use the gyro at all. So uh, the mode switch, if, if your three position switch is in the middle, you have the mode switch to manual. And you, you see this if you turn on the plane and if you wave like this and you have no server movements, the gyro is deactivated. And in this mode nothing really bad can happen. You just have to take care of course that uh, your aileron settings are correct and not, not reversed. Uh, so make sure this is correct and then just fly it and if this works uh, Check the servo Movement uh, in gyro mode if you wave it it should always counter your if you move the wing in this direction It should go up. <laughs> yeah, you will figure this out. So make sure the gyro directions are correct Okay, so that's about it. I wanted to show this plane now maybe even build it in the winter like I did and have something nice to fly right away in spring. The next video I will be doing involves this Runcam Swift 2. Okay, so thanks for watching. I hope you continue to watch my channel in 2017. I uh, hope you liked my previous year and I'm so looking forward to all the awesome stuff we will see in the future. Thanks for watching. Bye. <laughs>